questions are being asked about whether there's a plot to oust the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, in an effort, get ready, my friends, to bring Boris Johnson back to the heart of British government. Even Come on, though Bojo. he's not an MP. Look at the... Well, just... We'll parachute him into Henley. That's easy. Don't worry about that. Well, the plans are being drawn up in an effort to avoid electoral wipeout at the next election. Well, joining us now is the Conservative peer, Lord Marland. Lord Marland... Good morning. Do you think we could see Boris Good back? morning, Nicola. Good morning. Come on, my good friend. Good Let's morning, have it. Nicola. It's me, by the way. I'm not a robot. OK, are you sure? I can see a little bit of photoshopping Genuine. around Genuine. the edges there. I have no there. Ring, rings on my fingers either. <laughs> uh, now, come on. Listen, we go back a long way. The comeback's on, yeah. isn't it, Marlon? Come on, let's have it. <laughs> uh, well, I, as I've said to you before, Jeremy, you can't keep the man out of the press because you're all fascinated by him. I mean, he's been in Venezuela seeing the president or the leader of Venezuela, Maduro, who most people would uh, try and avoid, but um, he, he's been to see him. You just can't keep him out of the press. It's always been the case with Boris. And, of course, as the Conservative Party go lower in the polls or do badly, they will always be calling. There will be a section calling for his return. It's very... I mean, I, look... Can you see it happening, though, Lord yes, Marlon? So Realistically, if they were to bring him back in, <laughs> how would that how No, would I that can't see it happening realistically, but you never know in this world. You know, this is a very febrile party. Uh, they've um, changed their leaders several times. They uh, are looking almost certainly at an election loss and they will cast around for anything that might try and prevent that. I think... I think um, it, I'm, but I'm, I'm not I, sure Boris is the answer. Well, I... Th and if I, you ask me, I'd say, don't do it. Well, no, fair enough. Um, it's quite interesting, because I said this a uh, couple of hours ago. Uh, all the people that are saying, bring Boris back, let's talk about conservative values. Many of his critics, some of his strongest critics before Partygate, well, hold on a second, mate, you've gone down this green energy route. You are not... You're not talking about increasing defence spending. You're not actually doing what traditional Tories would think. I'll tell you one thing I do know, my Lordship. There ain't any way that Boris Johnson or Liz Truss are going to do anything but sit and watch carnage rain down on Rishi Sunak's head because I think they probably feel absolutely bitter and twisted about what happened. I'm, I'm convinced nobody is going to grab that poison chalice before the election and I think the Tory party's going to have to reinvent itself, don't you? A very good analysis, Jeremy, as always. Uh, I can't disagree with a single word you've said. Well, great. Well, that's a well, that's great. That's 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 <laughs> sorry, to a great sorry interview. Not to argue with you. Uh, sorry, Marlon. not to argue with you. Uh, I, <laughs> I you find know, a I know way. we want an argument at eight in the morning, but I'm not going to do it. You're, <laughs> you're completely right. So you mentioned earlier about Boris having. Sorry, this st stops you in your tracks a bit. I know, Jeremy. Ruin you've the been morning so much. Ruin the morning. <laughs> Let's just so sticking with Boris now. You mentioned earlier sorry, that Nicola. he's he's no problem. He's met with the. Venezuelan dictator. Why? What does this speak to Boris Johnson's, I'm going to say ego in a way, for him to be able to fly over to Venezuela to have a meeting with a leader, apparently sending a text message to our Foreign Secretary, uh, David Cameron, whilst he was in transit. Do you think Boris has never really given up on the idea that he is still the leader of the Tory party? No, I don't, I don't think he's... <laughs> I don't think he thinks he's the leader of the Conservative Party or... Or, or wants to be. I think he is very committed to the cause of uh, Ukraine. Uh, of course, um, Maduro is close to Putin, and I think he feels he can intervene. I mean, he is, after all, holidaying in the very close proximity to Venezuela. It's not exactly flying for miles on a specific trip. It was a day visit, and if you know he can intervene for the benefit of the world in bringing peace to that part of uh, of Europe, then uh, it would be a very good thing. And, you know, he's a very charismatic and persuasive man. He's very popular internationally. He may not be popular in the UK, but internationally he's thought of as a very big figure in politics. And so maybe, you know, this won't do any harm. It's interesting, isn't it? Because after all the chaos uh, of, uh, you know, Brexit and... and pandemic and him going when Pincher did what Pincher did as the final straw and then Liz Truss. It's interesting, isn't it? And I'd love your take on this. And you're a serious man, but, but you know, it called for <laughs> stability, really. I remember soon out sort of marching up 10 Downing Street and saying it's going to be calm and considered and it's going to be different. He is now less popular than Liz Truss was, Rishi Sunak. The Tory party are in free fall. 
Uh, talk about losing the argument. It's, it's not even about that now. It seems that most of this country is desperate for change, whatever that change may be. Mm. And Sunak mm. has to live with that because it's... I know people won't like this, but it was only... What was it? 39 months ago that the Tories were, were, were returned with an 80-seat majority. Now mm. they face electoral wipeout, Lord Marlon. What the hell happened? Well, I think uh, the, the public uh, won't forgive the Conservative Party for managing COVID, which was a very difficult time. We spent a lot of money in often in the wrong places. But, you know, it, it's a, a party rarely does well after a war. And this was a war, uh, an assault which we've never had or haven't had since 90, 1939. So, uh, and you look at history and it, it never rewards the party that's in power. And you'll see that all the elections over the world, Jeremy, and I've just been travelling around the East uh, uh, extensively in my role the Commonwealth, uh, in the Commonwealth Service today, which uh, Nicola mentioned. It's clear that the, all these 60 elections that are happening at the moment, they will swing to the other party with the exception of two or three. Uh, they'll go to the right, as we're seeing in Portugal. Uh, they'll go to the left, as we'll see in other countries. But the, 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 the party holding power will get battered. And uh, that often happens. I think Rishi's doing a good job, by the way. Uh, you know, he's had to tackle the advent, the, not the advent, sorry, the, <laughs> that's totally the wrong word, the, um, the aftermath of all these terrible and difficult things, the uh, infighting of the He wanted the job, though, my Party, friend, didn't he? And the financial situation. He wanted the job, sorry. though, didn't he? And my, my point is, whether we think he's a victim of circumstance or, in fact, out of his depths, when he walked up those, those stairs and he said it was going to be different, he gave Gavin Williamson a job. Within five minutes, he had to sack him. I don't see that Rishi Sunak will go down in history any better than Johnson or Trust. I really mean that, and I think it's a shame. Well, I think it's a shame because he's got inflation down, he's got interest rates back down, even though they're increased. Um, we are obviously paying the biggest tax burden we've had to, we've ever paid. Uh, that is as a result of the huge giveaway we've given uh, during COVID, which uh, he's him. not being rewarded yeah. for, in fairness. So... Uh, I think he has got a problem. I don't envy the Labour Party if they do win the next election. Probably not by as big a landslide as everyone thinks. I think it could be closer than you you think because they haven't actually lit the fuse under anybody yet, the Labour Party. I'm so, so it'll be interesting up, outcome. But I but, but I don't think I don't think I think Rishi will not be in history as one of our greatest leaders. I agree with you. Lord Marlon, you Nicola. are not That's you right. are not Thank photoshopped, but lovely to have you on, my friend. Thank you. So what a lovely man he is. Good yes, man. Indeed. Thank you.